Hi, I'm Carlos Santos. I'm a geophysicist and I have a PhD on applied physics. And today I am here to study and to learn about the ancient combat techniques of the Shisen, their Bujutsu, their ancient uh, ways of war. Hello, I'm Silos Luis Noveira, president of the European Buddhist Society, as you know, but today I would like to offer my perspective and my inner thoughts being industrial engineer, uh, and I would like to offer by this condition uh, the whole on the physics and different perspective that I could offer to the lineage and the information of our tradition. Hello, I'm Rebecca Broca. I'm a fine artist and I study here in Casa Nori de Oaxa, a martial arts school of Japanese classical tradition and I'm here interested in how to study better and get in deep about Japanese and Shisen culture. Hello, I'm here as you know me, I'm Shidoshi Jordana Galenja, I'm Shidoshi Jordan's wife and I have the pleasure of meeting a lot of, a lot of great masters and discuss a lot of uh, treasures uh, for me. There are some details of anthropological aspects and some um, Robotic aspects, also from some ancient traditions of Shizen and some uh, analysis with the Japanese traditional culture. Hello, today we will be discussing a very deep uh, knowledge about the Shizen tradition and the, uh, mainly how to survive in warfare situation. Today we, are, we will be discussing us as for what is Chakushi no Ho, the method of uh, to clothing, to wearing uh, like, a, like a dead man or something like that. Then uh, some people believe that uh, this is a classical bujutsu, but in the era that these techniques and skills were developed, it's not a, a bujutsu and it could be considered as a way of behaving, uh, of behavior in uh, in warfare, then it's more like a gunga. Then, please, Shidojuna, uh, could you explain more, a little more about what what is this chakushi no no ho, please? Well, this is a, a great uh, tactic. Actually, it's a strategic tactic that they used to apply during some uh, combats. Actually, on the battlefield, especially using. Uh, that soldiers that were uh, wearing the Japanese armor, the yoroi, to protect themselves from um, arrows or even to disguise themselves during the night and then had, uh, to have an opportunity to get out of that uh, conflict area surrounded by enemies or even to use a dead soldier to disguise and attack like a surprise technique also, uh, during the, those conflicts, sometimes there are a lot of confusion, everybody's running, or uh, it's very hard for your peripheral vision to know completely what, what is uh, actually happening around you. So they use that, that knowledge to disguise themselves with a dead body over them on the lateral, or depending on the circumstance, we have a lot of it to discuss in this video. But also to apply the weapon. So you can use it to hide and then to have an opportunity to run away from it in the dark or even to use it to attack or to allow your partners or the other the others that are coming with you to pass in a more safer situation. Towards the, the, the exit, I mean if you're in a if you're trapped in some space surrounded by walls like during inside castles or something or even using nature itself, because when it's dark and you have a lot of confusion, it's hard for you to see completely what is happening in all parts. So that's what they use it, to, to have more chance to amplify that percentage of escaping or of doing something with, uh, more efficient with the surprise concept. It's nice because it seems that to hide in this kind of circumstance and this kind of conditions, the condition of light needs to be low, to say. 
that uh, the, to be hidden uh, a low condition on lights makes that uh, it could be uh, easier to be confused in the environment and this uh, is uh, also uh, a test by, by the, the light knowledge, the light knowledge of the engineer when you engineering when you see that of course the colors when the lights are, are going very down we are on night or dark uh, environment we will see that the colors cannot be seen at the same way and the, then the shapes cannot be uh, identified in the same way then under my perspective I think that this kind of survival uh, needs uh, to be uh, in th this kind of environment makes more interesting, more realistic perspective of how to survive in this uh, warfare and these uh, battle circumstances. Could you, Carlos, San, by your uh, as an expert uh, engineer and a PhD, could you say something about the investigations that you are having on this method, please? Well, it's very interesting because the well, when you see the why they developed this kind of, of techniques, you will realize that they were completely outnumbered historically ag against the, the invasion and, and against the, the, the warfare. So uh, they, were, they will really try to struggle in a guerrilla combat. So, and, and you will see that it's very, very interesting that most of the concepts that were developed hundreds of years ago, maybe six or seven centuries ago, are still uh, available and are still applicable to wa actual warfare. To, to, uh, to actual guerrilla tactics when you are uh, when you want to attack a higher number of enemies and you if you do it in a frontal line you, you will be completely banished so you need technique you need to, to use the psychology and you need to use this strategy in order to be able to, to survive so it's, it's a survival technique like the most modern uh, Navy seals or green birds the special uh, the special forces in the in the armies in the world so uh, the the, the main idea is trying to use the psychological aspect, using environment, using the, the, the confusion, as Shishulen was saying, because you are not being able to focus your, your, your mind on just one point. So there is a lot of uh, noise, the, the, you are afraid, because I mean, there, is, there is something that is around you, maybe you have been shooting or maybe arrows, and you are in a, in a very tense situation. So using the psychological uh, moment, you will use the environment, you will use another enemy in order to be able to conquer a particular objective. So, for example, you can go from one place to another using this disguise, using your enemy as a shield, and then being able to go from one point to another. So it's, it's a very uh, tactical, it's a very technical and strategical uh, positioning of the body of your enemy, because that's what the name of the technique suggests, that you are wearing a dead body. So, using a dead body as a shield, as a disguise, you are going to be able to succeed in a particular task. Go from one point to another, or simply just go away from a particular dangerous situation. Thank you very much, Carol San. I would like then uh, to go to the practical side, and please, Sidosh, could you uh, introduce in the practical side of yeah, this? Sure. Uh, so yes, no. We have mainly 11 ways mm -hmm. uh, that we see using it. You see that a lot of future use that, so we can divide depending on the environment, if you are in a battlefield, if it's a combat, I mean, amongst a lot of persons. And then we're going to reduce it to, it goes to what the situation that Carlson explained, that is invading or coming from one point to another. So, um, I need a dead body. I could be a dead stunt <laughs> for this purpose. I will lie so, down. Yes. So, imagine, for instance, that uh, there are a lot of confusion here. You see, uh, there is a dead soldier, especially on a battlefield, they will be using armor, so that's, that's the point that we are going to use to protect ourselves. And we can catch the arms, we are going to rope down, and gently, because she is not there, I'm going to put it her over me. So the armor is it's larger, okay, so it's going to protect the body, again, for me to go out. And uh, also there are a lot of situations, so lateral also, coming from the lateral side, I can bring her, for instance, up, 
And that's a, a really good one because you see I have the legs here. So sometimes people are passing by, attacking, or coming actually to certify that the, the person that is on the ground are dead. So we can use the armor. You see that remember we have those pieces here on the leg, and with a ton of something. I can come up and I can use the knife or something to the I, I think that it would be very interesting for the camera and the all sorry, to all sorts of subscribers if I try maybe to to we do like it could be how it like could a be a simulation, yeah. Please. So for instance, and we are in that situation and it means that you are trying to review a um, normal environment, isn't it? Okay, imagine I have a tanto here. I'm not, that would be an imaginary tanto. Okay. So I catch her, I pass it, and I'm here. And I detect that you are hiding between a dead corpse in the ground, and right now I am trying to attack. I'm from See? here. I... That, is, that is the protection of the armor. Yeah. Okay, so that's what I have. From here, I will already have the tanto out of the. out of of my waist, and then I can get it here, as I said here, and I can come to finish the attack. So that is a uh, nice. very interesting situation, using the armor of to protect myself during the attack. So this is a battlefield uh, strategy, using the corpses, and there are a lot of them actually changing the angles, if I must be more lateral, or uh, even uh, completely hidden. Yes, and there is a great one also using the yari in mm -hmm. case of uh, troops with the uh, horses. This, this method seems to be, the, this one uh, seems that the course must be on the position, means on, uh, on prongs, it means uh, face down to the ground. We could do, for example, if you think, uh, doing, uh, it's a very interesting method if we uh, perform by this circumstance that you were speaking about the Yari and this circumstance, oh, sure. for example. Yes, of course. So I'm going to change, let us change just a bit the, the angle. I'm going to press it here. Imagine that I have a sword or even the, the I, Yari. I so I'm going to lift the sword uh -huh. here for a nice explanation. And I have the Yari here, it's close to me. Now, those techniques are actually used when you are in the forest, more than a battlefield, because you see the Yari is it's easier to hit in the, the weapon when you have uh, um, plants and depending on, on the way on um, the forest or on the, um, the place that you are. You see here we have a, a dead body here, so I bring it up and I put myself under it. Okay? So of course, and especially during the night when there's no not enough light, it's hard for you to define from far away from the where the soldier is coming. If it's a rock or something, it's completely the environment. I just has overgrown the environment. I'm coming here. So here, see, I have the weapon here near me. It's behind the body also. So from here, just by bringing the yari, I have the opportunity to strike. Yes. I, 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 will, I will be running like I am uh, in a in a barrel place in a barrel uh, area. And I would be running and not caring what happens on the corpses, isn't it? Is that yes, right? of course. That's the surprise. It's surprising the Surprising the enemy. Okay, because he's, he's, he just sees that he's have to pass by running through a dead body. Okay, so that's number nice. one. We are, we are using, we're dealing with a long weapon. So. Uh, I, I consider very interesting to notice where needs to be placed the bottom of the yari in order to. For example, if I am running, I am right, riding a horse. horse, for example, sure. how it could be applied on this? Okay, so based on the same principle, I am I'm hidden here, okay? And I have the other near me, so in this case, especially with the horse, the thing is that we need a, a, a part to support the yari, so it's normally placed, now I'm going to release you just for you to see, the hip, because we have a strong bone here, so that's that's when we are going to use it, okay? Of course she will be... Of, of course, because we are considering that in front we have the force of a horse. It means the, the horse is running 
and it so will press past my body. It's very heavy, and if the it, and if it's placed on the abs or stomach, it could be also thrust back. I cannot, I cannot support the yadi in a way that I have my body against hers. Okay, it's the strength that comes against the weapon, and depending, of course, also of the condition of the corpse. You know that depending on how many hours or something is that the, the tissues, the everything gets more soft. Yeah. So it will be easy to transpass it, and of course I cannot be close and in the same target of this weapon. So that's why we use also the bone, and it's a really strong bone. We have the lateral area of the of the hip here, the iliaco, and so if it transpasses something, it goes to the ground or it comes. Lateral. Aside, yeah. Comes aside, and that's with the yari, and of course, also we can use, always use the sword. So, this is especially when someone is passing by running. For example, so again, I'm running and I am not caring what happens to the horses. And right now, when I am running, ah, yeah. And then I have a sote position and I just position the blade. So, you see here, I have, I have the blade in a position where I have the support of my forearm. The sote, so when you pass. Could we do this technique on the other side? It could sure. be maybe good for the camera because it, it's important to see what happens. Could you place it on the arm? Imagine that is Of I am here. I have spears here on my side. It's and I have like the one that's close to me. Uh, here, oh, okay. So you see, I have the support on my forearm and also on her body. So I do that. Nice. Next, I will. Then I will be uh, cut on the on the on the ankles. I will be cut uh, on the heels. Mm -hmm. And of course, nice. so then I can finish the tag or something, and, and okay. I will kill the other opponent. And I can use also the body, or I can go away and, and get out of this situation. I, I remember that this technique, uh, um, those techniques, because this is a method, a buying method inside. Uh, of, of, on this what we are talking, it's called about kage. It's, I mean, it's like the, a saddle, isn't it? It's uh, the way. Yes, it's like it's like using a shadow over you, so you're hitting and then you come out of it. There it's, are some situations also when uh, someone is uh, outside and you hide from the body while he is guarding. Situation. Yes, yeah, that's, that's beautiful. beautiful. That's, those are beautiful also uh, techniques. Now we're leaving the forest and the battlefield, mm -hmm. and you, you go to a situation where you're invading the place or actually you're evading from mm -hmm. this place. Sure. So uh, normally they use a knife, so please remember that those, those techniques belong to the, a kind of tactic mm -hmm. study that they, they have. For attack, so this one that you're saying, for instance, is you can do both both ways. You can come here, you stab, so it goes directly down. You see, we have important uh, arteries here. We have uh, the, the structure of the shoulder protecting those arteries that come directly from the heart. So it goes deep, so it would be like this. And I'm going to fall down with the person at the same moment avoiding any kind of noise okay so if someone some other person is guarding you'll see just that someone has fallen and without you, you don't see who did it so probably they will see that and they'll go look in another direction because they don't see anybody just a dead soldier so uh, the other one also is coming from the lateral so i will change my hand with the tanto, I grab the arm, I do the, the step, and then I bring her over my back. So this is specially used in case of arrows. So we are not dealing on, on uh, close areas inside uh, castles or something, but probably on the yard. So when she falls over me, just please again, she's here. I protect myself and then I turn around and I go from the lateral side. Okay, okay protecting, protecting your, yourself. Then you are using the corpse, the body of the, the, of 
the enemy as a shield, isn't it? For protecting against the uh, firing of the, uh, of yes, the of weapons. Yes, of the. Uh, and remember that normally the archers were in a higher position. So the arrows normally come by you know, from up to down. So that's why I need to protect my back. I see. And it. once the first, uh, the first arrows arrive, I have this small time just to go for a protected area. I know why it's important to uh, not to make any kind of noise when you are in this uh, kind of tactical uh, action to go forward to one place to another and move positions. Yes, but uh, actually there is a, a situation that you can show with the uh, Palestine mm -hmm. when you do a noise and you want to actually get their attention so the archers will shoot the first arrows and then after it the others can pass mm -hmm. yes. from the lateral. This is applied to, to progression in, in battlefront situation that it's called, uh, it's the, the fourth uh, area of study of this method that it could be applied and it's called Shinpo Shen Hogo. This Shinpo means to progress, it's the progression. This Shen comes from the war and the Hogo means protection or pro to protect. Then this protection are employed in this kind of circumstance. For example, if we are covering, uh, I, I, I ask you, so Julian, also to be a partner, as you are also helping me. Carlos San will be a sentinel, covering here, will be your victim here. <laughs> and the first thing we have to understand that in front we could have a legion of uh, bowmen, of archers. And it could be firing. Then what I will do is to use the the body, the alive body of the enemy as a shield to protect ourselves. Then so Juliana will be placed on my back. I will be covering and uh, doing very slightly. I will do this protection, having this control, and from here, here. I could do also move forward in order to gain control. And when we have a covering, for example. Imagine that you have a side, uh, a cover, you could go aside and also with the idea to progress. At the end, when, uh, when the body, yet the corpse of the enemy, because it could be fired and it could be uh, receiving the, the arrows, it would be uh, then I will throw to the ground and I will continue in order to gain control. This is one of the perspective of this method. We could also do the following thing. When we are not surrounded by, by enemies, for example, Carlos Han, one more time, what we could do is the following. I will go backward here, having control on the, on, the, on the feet, and not trying to throw the enemy, but going to the ground, to this side, I will use my weight here in order to press the trunk because if he has any weapon, for example, a hunt or whatever he could have, I need to have this control restricted. And from here, I thrust on the neck, on vital points, vital areas. And I could have, for example, this is employed uh, in circumstances that maybe I am a one survival and I need information of what is happening around and I need to know the enemies that I will uh, take in front, the enemies that it's around, that it's looking for me or whatever. Then, in order to survive, I will thrust, I will ask, and after that, I will move and I will run away. Then it's also employed in escape situation or progressing in order to run away from a from a. And that's a really, really good, good uh, technique, also because imagine that we're, if we're dealing with a, a open field, that's one thing. But Imagine, for instance, that you are in the village, yeah? so depending on the place that he is, when you bring him to the ground, actually, the soldier disappears. So you can ask for information, request information, you can kill, and then you go out and talk to another soldier. Mm -hmm. I like it very much, this perspective, because uh, I, it links us, I think, to a very ancient tradition and it's uh, very good to know this important information that we are investigating, that we are getting on Gungaku and this special tactics and strategy on warfare on battlefront. Thank you very much for the explanations. To all of you, I appreciate too much 
the, also the perspective from uh, engineer and PhD, Carlos Santos, investigating for his sensei graduation, etc. I, I, I like it too much. Thank you very much for following and watching this video. I hope you have enjoyed as much as we have. Uh, did. Thank you very much and keep, keep following our channel.